Mary Magdalene is both very famous and very misunderstood. She's a woman that appears throughout the gospel story as a companion to Jesus, a woman that was both present at his crucifixion and his resurrection. A lot of these misunderstandings have been fueled by pop culture. So for example, the speculation that she was Jesus's wife fueled by the Da Vinci Code and Jesus Christ Superstar. But it's not all conspiracy theories. Actual New Testament scholars are arguing that there may have been efforts in the earliest decades of Christianity to diminish the role of Mary Magdalene in the Gospel story. This is according to Duke University doctoral student Elizabeth Schrader, who I interviewed earlier this year. I'll cut to parts of that interview throughout this video, but you can find the full cut on my second channel. Schrader basically argues that by comparing variations in our earliest manuscripts of the Gospel of John, we can infer that Mary Magdalene had a much bigger role than what she has in our modern Bibles. There's a story in the Gospel of John about a friend of Jesus named Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha. According to the text, they live in the town of Bethany outside of Jerusalem. Long story short, Lazarus dies, Jesus goes back to Bethany, has a few intense conversations with Mary and Martha, and then raises Lazarus from the dead. It's one of the more famous stories in the New Testament. And if you read this story in your modern Bible, it seems that Mary, the sister of Lazarus, is not Mary Magdalene. But I'm not so much focusing on the story in this video. I want to focus on the manuscripts of the story. What do I mean by manuscripts? When you pick up a modern Bible, it seems like a unified text. It's one book, it's numbered from page one to a thousand something, but the text that you read in a modern Bible is the result of biblical scholars piecing together the text from manuscripts. Some of these manuscripts contain nearly complete versions of biblical texts, like the Codex Sinaiticus, a fourth century manuscript that contains the entire Old and New Testaments. Other manuscripts are literally just tiny scraps of papyrus with only a few verses on them. So scholars compare all of these manuscripts to come up with the definitive version that you have before you today. But all of these manuscripts have variations. A changed letter here, a different word there. Usually these variations are not a big deal and don't change the meaning of the text, but sometimes they do. And when it comes to the Lazarus story, something really wonky is going on with the manuscripts, especially when we look at what's probably our earliest version of this story, Papyrus 66. Now the thing about Papyrus 66 is that the scribe is wonky. Um, the scribe has made... <laughs> That's the technical uh, term. <laughs> yes, very wonky. Uh, the scribe has made 450 changes to the text of the Gospel of John. Now, most Christians don't know that, that the oldest copy that exists of the Gospel of John has had 450 changes made to it, but that's a fact. 450 changes. Now, like Schrader says, most of these changes are very minor, but it seems that in two places, the scribe added Martha. Okay, I'll summarize the situation. In P66 version of John 11.1, 1, the original text read, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and of Mary his sister. But scholars have noticed that the scribe changed the second Mary to the name Martha with one little letter, changing the iota in Maria to a theta, creating the name Martha. And the scribe does something similar a few verses later. John 11:3, 3, the verse originally reads, Mary sent to him saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But the scribe scratched out Maria and wrote, the sisters the sisters sent to him saying. So what originally had one woman acting alone has become two women. But I had read somewhere that, you know, sometimes people think that Lazarus's sister, Mary, Mary of Bethany, um, some people think that that's Mary Magdalene. She anoints Jesus, but there's, we're not sure if it's Mary Magdalene. So I'm like, well, let me just check there too. And so I went back to chapter 11 and I see that the name Mary has been crossed out twice. Hmm in Papyrus 66. And I was like, whoa. And um, like physically crossed out by some scribe. Correct. Okay. Um, and we can look at a picture of it if you like. Yeah. Um, uh, the first time the name, it's Maria in Greek. The first time the name Maria <clears throat> was changed to the name Martha. And it's literally just one letter's difference in Greek. Um, the, the I, uh, which is an iota, was changed to a a theta. Um, so a theta is one letter in Greek. So Maria is changed to Martha. And it's very clear that that's what's happened there. And that, you know, that could be seen as just a scribal mistake, like the scribe got confused. Um, except that just a couple of verses later, a woman's name has been scratched out very obviously. And it looks really bad <laughs> in the papyrus. And it is changed to say, hi, Adelphi, the sister. Not only that, but all the verbs in that verse are changed from singular to plural. 
And I was like, wait a second. It looks like they're changing Mary into Mary and Martha. And this is the oldest copy we have of the Gospel of John in the Lazarus story. Now, this isn't necessarily some nefarious plot or conspiracy. Schrader theorizes that the scribe was sitting in front of two copies of the Gospel of John, one copy that didn't have Martha and one copy that did. And the scribe made the conscious decision to correct the version in front of him to the more authoritative version, the version with two sisters. His decision was possibly influenced by the Gospel of Luke, where we get another famous story with two sisters, Mary and Martha. But in the Gospel of Luke, these sisters are not the sisters of Lazarus. What's weird here, though, is that P66 is not alone. In fact, 18% of our Greek manuscripts of John 11 have an issue around the sister Martha. So we can reconstruct a, a situation where the scribe was sitting in front of two different versions, one version that has both sisters, Martha's saying a lot more, and then changing the one in front of him to match that one. So that's kind of yeah. the, the hypothetical situation. I believe that Papyrus 66, that this scribe, one of the exemplars had Martha and the other one didn't. Hmm. And at a certain point, um, I believe it's in the middle of John 11, verse 5, the scribe makes the decision, you know what, I'm going to copy the version that has Martha, because that's the verse. After that verse, everything is stable around Martha for the rest of Papyrus 66. But before that, there's all these problems and you can see the scribe trying to reconcile them. And in fact, most of these problems from John 11 verse one to five can be explained as the scribe knowing both versions and trying to find a way to, to make it work hmm. without, you know, but well, honoring both exemplars and it just doesn't work. And so the scribe, I think, gives up in John 11 five and says, okay, we're going to do the one with Martha. Yeah. An echo of an earlier text without Martha. Now, of course, this is completely hypothetical. We can't prove it for certain, but it does show that there was an unstable process in copying the gospel of John where Martha kind of phases in and out of the story. Remember, this is before the printing press. This was before the copying and pasting in Microsoft Word. Scribes had to copy biblical texts by hand, and they not only made mistakes, but they were also making conscious choices to correct the text in front of them, correcting the text to something that they viewed was more authoritative. There's also evidence outside of the Bible that points toward the instability around the character Martha. So for example, in John 11 in a modern Bible, Martha says a super famous statement proclaiming that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. But Tertullian, a third century church father, says that Mary proclaimed this famous confession. So we can hypothesize that he was familiar with a version of the Lazarus story that swaps this very important role between Martha and Mary. In fact, he possibly was familiar with a story that lacked Martha entirely. And Tertullian was alive only 100 years after the Gospel of John went into circulation. So why is this important? Well, without Martha, we have a much more consistent character of Mary throughout the entire Gospel of John. We have Mary Magdalene in the beginning of the Gospel of John, this Mary of Bethany character in the middle of John, and Mary Magdalene in the end of John. So Elizabeth Schrader argues that the original author was intending that this Mary was Mary Magdalene. So remember that in John 11, Mary, the sister of Lazarus, is never called Mary of Bethany. She's simply called Mary. And a lot of early Christians made this inference, assuming that Mary of Bethany was also Mary Magdalene. In 591 CE, Pope Gregory popularized this interpretation for centuries to come. So the hypothesis that Mary, Lazarus's sister, and Mary Magdalene are the same person is actually a very ancient theory. The New Testament scholar Mark Goodacre describes why this was an easy inference to make. Mary Magdalene and Mary of Bethany are never seen in the same room at the same time, and they share similar traits, like weeping at a tomb before a resurrection. Although Mary of Magdala has become a scholarly commonplace, it is worth remembering that she is never described this way in the Synoptics or John, where she is always Mary Magdalene or just Mary. So to summarize, Schrader argues that without Martha, you have a consistent Mary character throughout the Gospel of John, and that the audience was intended to make the inference that Mary, the sister of Lazarus, was Mary Magdalene, and that this change happened sometime in the second century CE. She further argues that this was consciously done to deflect attention away from Mary Magdalene, because otherwise she would have been way too prominent in the Gospel of John and would have possibly been a threatening figure 
a figure drawing too much attention away from the male 12 apostles of Jesus. So I sat down with Elizabeth Schrader to go deep into this research, and I bring up a few possible rebuttals. So for example, how can we as scholars excavate the intention behind an editor's choice? Sure, we have the hard evidence that somebody was changing these stories to make Martha more prominent, but can we really make an argument about what that scribe was thinking as he made those changes? But I'll let you be the judge of that. I encourage you to head on over to the second channel. The link is in the description below and watch the full interview. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. It's major. It's a big change. People don't want to think about this. They don't want to think about, I mean, obviously the people who make the criti critical editions have to think about it. Right. But a lot of people don't want to think that their Bible could have been changed in such a major way.